Hello everyone and welcome to Stay on the Wine Man TV. I am your host, Stan Rattan, and this is the Blue Collar Wine Show, where I help you spend your wine dollars wisely. Been having fun with this uh, California versus Washington Merlot episodes. This is part four, the last part, and believe it or not, as you know, it's come down to a tie. One and a half to one and a half. So we've done three, there was a split, there was a tie. First episode, Washington won this third episode. California uh, edged out, Peju edged out a big boy from Washington State, Pedestal Merlot, one of Michelle Roland's projects. So it was very close, but California did it. A few people have actually uh, only one person dove in on the comments about what was the second reason, second reason that Merlot saw. A decline in sales and actually probably could be the main reason a lot of people like to say sideways did it it's possible sideways had something to do with it but the real reason is this and before I give you the real reason or not the real reason one of the main reasons I want to give a shout out to some new subscribers I have hit 500 subscribers that's so cool so cool thank you guys for your support for sharing with with other people what I'm doing and this program, and I hope you're really enjoying it. I hope you're learning something and finding great wines. I know that um, I discovered Peugeot, which I, I'm familiar with the label, never tried the Merlot. I was thoroughly impressed with that. So I'd like to give a shout out to Gustavo Gomez, Andre Ventner, Victor, Fast Eddie. These are handles on, the, on their uh, YouTube. Paula Locke, Francois Breton, Reese, and thank you, Tanner. We're three of us sitting together having lunch, and I, I talked to the guys about hitting getting close to 500. Now, these are guys in the industry, and I said, would you guys mind subscribing to my channel? You know, check it out. You'll learn some things about wine. And the only one out of the three was Tanner. Thank you, Tanner, for doing that. And then also a shout-out to John Russell. Very, very exciting. I mean, you know, I, of course I had high hopes when I first started all this. Oh, yeah, I'd hit all these big numbers right away. It's not as easy as you think. There's a lot of work behind it got to keep pumping out uh, on Facebook, Twitter, you know, Instagram, social media, all this stuff. You got to keep reminding people that you have episodes out there, LinkedIn, all very good tools for doing that. And I'm really, really stoked about the people that have subscribed to the channel. Uh, the second reason, maybe the most, uh, the biggest reason why Merlot sales dropped is during the late mid 80s and early 90s, Merlot got hot. I mean, it was the hot varietal. Everybody planted it. They planted it everywhere. Problem with that is some of the places they planted Merlot were not good for Merlot. And a lot of overproduction. So especially in the um, central coast of California, tons of Merlot came out and it wasn't all that good. So the quality wasn't there. And you know what? Any consumer, I don't care what they're spending, wants something worth spending their money on. Whether it's 5 bucks, 10 bucks, 20 bucks, they want it to be worth that. Well, a lot of insipid Merlot went out there and the, the interest in Merlot kind of dropped off. That's a big reason about that. And we had quite a discussion about this a long time ago with a, a winemaker who's a, who's, who works for a very famous winery down in Napa. And, and that's when I really started thinking about it, doing some research, and that's really what a lot of people are saying, is that just a lot of junk went on the market. So, there you go. Okay. We're going to get started in part three. I'm kind of nervous. And I say this because... You know, I'm a big proponent of uh, Washington Merlot. I know there's good California Merlot. There's obviously good Italian Merlot. There's good, obviously, great Merlot on the right bank of Bordeaux. But, uh, you know, we talked about Petrus being one of the big boys. Uh, high price right out of, the, out of the gate, and it's a 100% it's Merlot. Okay, number one. Oh, here we go. This is the tiebreaker, baby. Hopefully it's not a tie again. Number one. Stoked about this. Exciting. 500 subscribers. We're down to a tie on the Merlot, which I didn't think was going to happen. Mm -hmm. But here we are. Number one. See the color? Fairly dark. Uh, what's that? Garnet to dark, dark red. Almost black. Really? See that? Maybe you can, maybe you can't. I don't know. 
Let's see what we get on the nose. Actually, you put it in give them white paper so you can see through not not very easily. A little baking spice on this one. Getting a little earth, which is cool, like a little bit of a bark action thing going on. Dark cherries. Dark cherries, I'd say black plum, and a little bit of bark action. Yeah, let's see what we get on the palate. A little rusticity to this, which I like. You get that bark action. You get a little bit of a tannic grip on the backside. Right up front, I get dark cherries, plum, flows across the palate. But there's just like cool little um, underneath action of, of rusticity, like bark and um, earth. Talk about needing food. This baby would really benefit from a burger, pizza, anything like that. The tannins aren't heavy. It's not the heavy, but they have a little grip on the back end of this one. I like the earthiness, the rusticity uh, blended with the cherries and uh, plum. A touch light on the palate, but a lot of good flavors. Yeah, it is kind of light, I will say that. Nice Merlot, needs food, not super complex, but has some very interesting things going on on the palate. Let me say it is, there is some complexity, it's just lightweight, which is kind of what we talked about with Merlot. It does not have a lot of tannins because there's more uh, juice to skin and, and stems, and I mean and seeds. Uh, so you get less of the tannic grip like you get with cab. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I like it. Need some food. But I like that little interesting thing that I haven't gotten out of a lot of these Merlot. Kind of that lighter style but a lot of that cool uh, earthiness and bark. And, yeah. Real grippy on the finish though. Hmm. Interesting. Alright, it's coming down on this, guys. Number two. I think it's about the same as the first one. A little darker, though. It's more leaning towards the black. Leaning towards the dark side of Merlot. Yes. I wore this shirt on every episode because I think it's a cool shirt. And that's what it says. The dark side of Merlot. Let's see what we get on the nose. I get kind of a blackberry cherry on the nose with this one. I get a little cinnamon, which I got in the, one of the ones earlier. I got one of the Merlots in the earlier episodes. I got cinnamon on the nose. Yeah, dark cherries, a little blackberry, a little cinnamon. Interesting. Nice aromatics on this wine. Let's see what we get on the palate. This one is a lot smoother than the first one. I mean, this is like polished. The beginning of the palate going into the finish. Tiny, tiny, tiny little uh, uh, spice action on the back side. Not as complex as the first one, but definitely polished. Dark cherries, front to finish. Uh, this is a little, little one-dimensional. I mean, it's, it, it's good. Don't get me wrong. It's a, it's it's a delicious Merlot, but it's 
kind of one-dimensional, you know what I mean? Now, I don't know what you're looking for when you're drinking a wine. A lot of people just pop a wine and just want to enjoy it. I mean, you know, that's what they want to do, and they don't really want to think about it. I get it. I get it. This would be great for that kind of wine. You get the dark cherries. You get the smooth, polished feel on the mouth. Um, it's lighter, but you expect Merlot to be a little bit lighter. There's a touch of earth underneath. I'm even getting a very interesting. I'm getting a little rhubarb. That's that flavor I'm getting kind of on the back side of the cherries, which is interesting to me. On the back side, too, there's a little bit of a, I want to say cola. But it's not quite cola, but it's getting to cola. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of there. Interesting. Solid, delicious, polished Merlot, but not very complex. And, uh, yeah. When, when, we, when you're drinking a wine or grating a wine or whatever you're doing, you're looking for a little bit of complexity, obviously. That's what makes a wine interesting, is complexity. What we mean by complexity, you heard my description on the first one, you have that kind of rusticity underneath, you have the, the, the dark cherry, the plum, that little underneath rusticity, a little grip on the back end, a little earth bark thing going on, that's complexity. I'll, whereas this one's just, boom, smooth, dark cherries. So that's what I mean by complexity just in case you wanted to know. A little light. First one was light as well. Oh. <laughs> All right. We're down to the wire here, guys. California versus Washington Merlot. It is tied going into the last episode. So, Pretty close on the scores here, on the grades, excuse me, but uh, we do have a winner. There's no tie here. In last place with a C plus, I thought it was delicious, but just polished, really not that interesting, except it was good. Does that make any sense? I think so. I hope you understand that. So with a C plus, we have, ooh, J. Lore, Paso Robles, Merlot, 2019. Family owned single. Family owned since '74. Like J. Lore wines, this is rolls in at fifteen dollars. J. Lore is a, a really good commercial wine. I mean, I mean, in the store we saw a lot of J. Lore. I would have no problem selling this on the show. I don't think anybody would complain about it. I just think it was a little bit, you know, just kind of. It was delicious, but not very interesting on the palate. That's all I'm saying. Ding, 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 ding. We have a winner. We know that Washington came out ahead. It should be two and a half to one and a half. What do we have here in, with a B minus? So pretty close in the grade. I thought this just had more interesting things going on. Ah, 2018. High Heaven Vintners. Sea of Tranquility Merlot. Columbia Valley, Washington. And this rolls in at thirteen dollars. I haven't Merlot. J. Lord was Paso Robles, which is Central Coast. Just saying. But like I said, this is not. There, there were some really bad Merlot. This is not a bad Merlot. This is just not as interesting as the High Heavens one. High Heaven Vint. High Heaven Vintners. There you have it. I hope you enjoyed this four-part series. I have some things stewing on the back of the burn on the back burner. I think I want to do a decanting episode. I always talk about how I pop them and then pour them because that's the way I feel most people do it. But we, we might break out a couple of serious wines, not so serious wines, and talk about the value of decanting. I know we're all very busy. A lot of us don't have time for it, but it really doesn't take that much to decant wine. And so uh, we'll talk a little bit about that. I might have an episode coming up on that. If you have any ideas for an episode, make a comment. What do you want me to do? I've had some ideas. I, I did the um, Bell Gloss uh, episode not too long ago. 
a, uh, one of my viewers asked me if I'd review one of the bell glass wines, which I did. So, any ideas you have, I'd love to throw those in. Love the fact that I hit 500 subscribers. Thank you very much for your support. For those of you who are watching that have not subscribed, please, you know, hit the subscribe button. I'd appreciate it very much. Thanks for taking a little time out of your day. You keep watching. And I'll keep helping you spend your wine dollars wisely. 13 bucks. Pretty cool.